All right, guys, here we're going to talk about Season 1, Episode 3 of Pushing Daisies. Uh, this is the, the so scene in this episode that I think about whenever I think of Pushing Daisies. Oh, sweet. And that's when, uh, when, when the casket accidentally locks and you see uh, yes! him and running. And he's running. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. That's I awesome. think of that all the time. I remember. So, like, I wouldn't have thought of it off the top of my head like you're saying, but, like, um, seeing it, it, like, jog, it, like, like as... As we're leading up to it, I like saw, I like remembered it and saw it coming, uh -huh. and, and and it was one of my favorite moments from the show overall. Yes, I thought this and bitch, I was in the proximity were the same episode. Oh, okay, I, cool, 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 cool. I was waiting for that this part to happen, nice. but it didn't happen. Yeah, but I, I yeah I I really like his character in general. He's I think, great. I think most of the funny things are his. Yes. Like he he is that guy. And uh, I want I want him to do I want them to bring the show back <laughs> just to get some more of that. I really think that we're onto something with that idea, uh, much like with the with the new Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. where you just set it that much in the future. Yeah. So so all the characters have aged as many years as it's been, and you just yeah. say, "Yep, that's what, you know, that's what's happening." Because the show's so quirky, you could just be like, "I vowed never do this again." I'm telling you, this is a big score. God, do this. And it's like, "What have you been up to?" Yeah. Uh, and they're all washed up and in weird situations and doing weird things. She's a cop. You could justify it. Yeah. <laughs> you could justify anything now, right? It's that just thing. like gets into these crazy, dangerous situations, and she can't die. <laughs> <laughs> Can she not die? I thought that. Oh you, man, is that live forever? Wow. Even what if you would get kill shot you? Or something? You're dead. Oh, it's amazing. They haven't gotten into that. Fighter. They haven't gotten into that quite yet. But yes, she can handcock her way through, you know, you know, through life. They should. Man, okay. We there's there's different angles we could go into. Olive owns her own pie shop now. <laughs> That's the whole thing. All right. There's lots to unpack here. Yeah. Um, we start out with more recap stuff, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, at first, I was like, wait, why are we doing more recap stuff? And in my head, I'm like, was it a two-hour pilot? Was the whole dandelion car in, like, the pilot? And now we're recapping just in case this is, eh, like, wow, why would we do that? But it turns out we're getting more into, like, we're showing Ned, like, studying <laughs> the power yeah. and all that stuff, which is great because um, it, uh, it helps you make sense of how he knows about it to this degree, right? Because you would have hoped he didn't just discover all this when Emerson and him uh, were, like, mm -hmm. doing the 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 uh, the in, in, you know investigation stuff or whatever. No, no, he he came into this as an old pro. He's got the bugs and all that, right? And he's doing the whole thing, and he's like, "I vowed never to like do this again," or whatever. Yes. I I also uh, just just to jump again on the part that I really love in the series is in this episode uh -huh. when he's walking through, and there's all, for whatever reason there's a bunch of dead bodies just on tables oh, sitting God. out, and as he walks through, he he like brushes them, oh, and they all oh, start shit. to come oh. alive, and then there's the there's like the southern Chinese guy, <sighs> and he's just like touching his face, and I was like. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Ah, yeah, it's a highlight of, of of the episode for me. I I again saw it coming, but not from memory, just because of how the scenes like laid out. Uh -huh. But yes, like um, they make good on that whole thing. He like picks up the thing, and and they're all saying weird stuff. Apparently, being you know coming back from the dead is very jarring and makes you very forthcoming with everything like that. Yeah, the one guy's line, oh, "What type? <laughs> what part do not resuscitate? Do you people not understand?" Or whatever. I'm like, yeah. oh, that, that's his first thought uh -huh. when he regains consciousness, and they're just like. Ugh. And like and like turn, it's like he's turning off like a loud stereo. He's just like ah, yeah, yeah. and like hits them all fast and all that. Yeah, and then I was like, I bet one of these people is not going to be dead. And it's the most outlandish character I think we've seen. Yes, yes. I love the backstory on his grandfather we'll, too. We'll just keep going from this thread then. Yes, he ran the wrong um, direction and and stole yeah. his clothes and so became like, a general. So like a, like absurdly funny racy racial whatever thing or whatever about him being like a Chinese uh, railroad guy or something like that. Uh -huh. I love the whole. Are you adopted? And then now was like, he was not adopted. <laughs> Yeah. He, his his great 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 grandfather whatever yeah just just putting on random confederate soldier clothing and then getting into that family somehow everyone just playing along with it he has like the bald head and long uh, you yeah. know, ponytail thing of like a warrior monk dude or something it's so i like everything about it it's so over the top it's great yeah no <laughs> i know um, and he's and and then so I literally wrote down in my notes, but he, but like this guy still talks like a southern guy. And then a few lines later, he's like, "I was the head of like the reenactors for the, for the Civil War." Or like, uh -huh. "Oh, that's amazing. Okay, great." So that's why he talks like that. It's wonderful. Yeah. It, all, it all like fits uh -huh. in. How'd you feel about? Well, I used to be a Jedi, and then him yeah, doing yeah. his things. I I didn't love that. That that uh, is is like a little corny to me. 
Uh, it, <laughs> it plays in the world of what they have. And, uh, yes, everything does. We all had friends that were like expertly good at like, like, ah, he's really good at stick fighting because he's practiced his bullshit. And, and that be. could have been Ned as a child. I believe that he had enough time alone without friends playing with sticks that he, he could have been a Jedi. I studied the blade. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. No, and like he, he like he like weaves in like a little line. So like everything on this show is not only what it is; it's also something else. Uh -huh. So w when he's talking to the uh, dude during their sword fight, they have some like moments where they're where they're like you know trading quips and liners and all that stuff. And I wrote down the line, you know, dot 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 kisser or or keeper or something like that. Okay. And I really liked that because he said like, no, we do our best, and we and and you know if we hurt people, we you know we we just apologize and we keep moving, and that's just how life is. There's plenty of tough choices in life and he starts naming things and the last one was kisser or keeper and it made me think about how like she was like gonna kiss him or whatever and he stopped right because he knew uh -huh. that so like that like literally was his choice he yes could, he he could keep her alive forever uh and never be able to kiss her in quotes or yes. whatever or get that one more kiss and the, and then whatever it frames it up even more differently than like it was already this hard choice this mm -hmm. awkward thing or whatever I loved that that line being called out and I think it cuts to the guy he's sword fighting making a face like that last one didn't make sense <laughs> or whatever something like that which I like a lot too um, <laughs> whatever did you like that Ned gets his kiss though through the, through oh, the plastic man. wrap? This happens a few times, and at the end he's like, "I'm gonna see if we have any plastic wrap." And I'm like, "I just picture their whole bodies in plastic wrap and this disgusting, kinky thing happening or whatever." Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty great. Yeah, plastic I wonder wrap. what I wonder what the onlookers. When, so when she kisses her early on, when when Chuck kisses, kisses Ned early on as a surprise through plastic wrap. I remember thinking, that's the riskiest maneuver you've ever done yes. in your entire life. What are you doing? They're very, a lot of these maneuvers are risky because you don't like, even if he just like reacted in his hand yeah. brush yours just like or the plastic wrap <laughs> hits your, hit your elbow or something or like that. Or it rips or yeah, like, exactly. oh, like his power knows no bound of plastic and it goes right through. Like I was actually worried when she touched uh, Emerson. While, while while Ned was touching Emerson, I thought he might conduct like the power in some way and like cause her to die somehow or like start to feel it and be like, "Whoa, what's I that?" I love that you're you're worried about this in a show you've seen the whole thing. Uh huh. It shows I, good writing. I get into the moment. No, listen, honestly. While they were kissing, while while I'm supposed to be like, "Oh, romantic love story, whatever," I feel so much tension about if they could touch each other and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm super in the moment and like on board with the whole thing. Because you see it as a, as a person who knows the, the consequences and they don't seem to be treating it as people that know the consequences. Sure. Like even just like <laughs> holding your hands through gloves. Are you inspecting the glove every day? Because right? what if it gets a hole in it? Gloves what get it, holes in them. What if it wears out? Yeah. What if you get a little nick in there? I know. No, it's crazy. Um, and there'd be no redo. It wouldn't be like, oh no, I'm, and you'd, you'd even know your mistake. You would be dead she would instantly. She just die. Yeah, I know. It's actually horrifying. It's very horrifying, yeah. But they play it for laughs here. Yeah. And they do well. They do they, no, they, they do uh, they um, do manage to keep that <laughs> lighthearted uh, you know, exchange between characters very yeah. very easily. No, it's it's like a testament to the whole thing cuz again, like I'm not I'm not in I'm not in this like oh, is there like a love story inserted into the whole thing or whatever? Mm -hmm. But like the fact that like Yes, really, you know, one of them should just leave the state and then both live in, like a normal lifespan, right? But like they can't because there's so, there's so much happening with emotions mm -hmm. or whatever. And that's like a testament to that, that like it really is dumb for them to be in, in such close proximity. But they want to be in close proximity, right? And she doesn't have a lot of <laughs> options, though. Like, no, where don't. really could she go? Eh. Because she has no identity. She has no money. She has nothing. She she, eh, she it would be difficult for her even to work. Go back with the ants and be like, I'm not dead, it turns out. Don't tell anybody. And they'd be like, Oh, okay. That probably would be fine. It'd be fine. <laughs> uh it would honestly be weird, like, why did you wait so long to come back and tell us that? I lost my memory. It's really weird. I lost my memory when I lost my life, but I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> I lost my memory. And my life. I mean my memory. What? You were I'm at sorry. my funeral, yeah I know. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, weird. No, I don't know what happened there. That wasn't me. Well, I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Oh, well, that makes one of us. It was an open casket. I had a twin. Hmm. All right, so what else happens in this episode? 
um, the, oh, the well, crime just, just is, to really quick wrap that up uh -huh. like uh, I love how uh, so it was really horrible when he rides the sword down the thing but I see what they yes, were going that's for that's in there. everything and it's always it's, horrible because it doesn't work that way <laughs> no I know and it's like super cringy to have that but they did it intentionally right This l the like thing falls on him like a sash and suddenly like the way the lighting is coming in it's just lighting in their eyes like an old swashbuckling like yeah. Yul Brenner or some uh -huh. weird thing it's just it, it was it, you know it's amazing and the narrator's food in and suddenly she saw Ned not as this but as that and you're like oh it's great it's so good yeah yeah the, I I like when everything's falling into place and like mm -hmm. hey you know chaotic and then when it stops someone's been like accidentally tarred and feathered somehow and you're like what it's a chicken uh -huh. man now and he's wearing a thing and it's like wait he looks like a chicken ha huh? like it all slowly came together and in that scene to have him like with a sword and like saving her and the sash and the and all the lighting yeah. and the things and then to have the rest of it like fall down and then like reveal all like the treasure and all that stuff like mm -hmm. choice very 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 good no it was good. Uh, the the whole thing riding a a sword down cloth it makes it's how'd that start? Why so why do we do that? It, it was in it was in movies originally, but I do think that there may have been a thing about this yeah. in reality. But I, I believe it was that you you're stabbing through the you know the cloth with the blade end up, and you're riding it with the with the dull end down. So it's it's just it's it's carrying the rip rather mm. than cutting through. Because I think if you use a, an actual blade. A, you, it takes a lot of strength to hold like your, your knife at an angle uh -huh. while do it down. But I think it would just it would just cut through like butter because of your added weight and and the sharpness of an actual sword. Yeah, I mean we're supposed to use it with like big thick canvas sails, I guess. And I'm never but even then I've never touched one of those. I have no idea how sharp pirate swords are, but I've always questioned it ever since the Goonies, <laughs> ever since everything. And Chunk's a big guy. I know he should never I mean, work. Sloth, Sloth's a big guy. I, I, Wait, was he holding Chunk? No, he wasn't. He, he just I, on his own. I do that too. It's fine. Yeah. Chunky Sloth man. Chunky Sloth man. <laughs> My fa my favorite Goonies superhero, Chunky Sloth Man. Yes, uh, but I, I like that this this uh the the crime is a crime that he committed. Yeah. I think that that is a cool thing. It's the I think the first and the only one of those in the series where uh, it is a yeah. death that he caused. But it's the density of it. It's like the incestuousness. How it's all together, right? Sure. Because someone died right in town, right, and then uh -huh. he gets hired because of all these complicated reasons, and he's cheeky about it. And then he says, "I told you. That's why. No, you want me to take this case. I want to make sure that no one solves it and all that stuff." And you're like, "Oh yeah. shit, right?" And they have these great. They're like butting heads over it. Mm -hmm. He's like, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, and that's final. And it cuts to them walking to the funeral home, and you're like, ah, oh, it's amazing. You're amazing. Yeah. This uh, this character that plays the twins, he's been in things like he's a yeah. face he recognizes. He's a, a character. I don't think he's ever been anything crazy popular, but but he's a, a face I remember and I like. Yeah. Character actor. Yeah. It would totally caught me off guard. I did not remember anything about twins. Mm -hmm. And part of me was like, are they twins? Am I just racist against fat people? I don't know. And then he says, what you know, he... being a twin is whatever. I'm like, okay, good. Oh, okay. I was going to say, what is the racist about fat people going to be? Do you think fat people can't be twins? I just think <laughs> all fat people look alike, apparently. Okay, that's and, what you uh, meant. And, and it was good because we have one guy, tracksuit, mustache man. Yes. And we have one guy, suit and cigar man. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice little, you know, it, it's easy in flashbacks yes. and in modern stuff to tell them apart, mm -hmm. which is great. And then do the classic thing where one grows the mustache. To I was you. thinking that for like a minute. You didn't kill Lewis. You killed the other guy, whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah. I shaved yeah, him yeah. after the fact. <laughs> yeah. That would have been funny. That would have been dope. Wasn't in it, though. Would have been a, a, a lot to try to cram in, I think. But yeah. Yeah, but this is a, it's a good episode. Uh, a a yeah, standard well, on the uh, so they're like uh, So we assume from the beginning that the twin is just like put upon and like persecuted by all this grief and family stuff. Uh -huh. He wants to make it go away. He wants to recover these 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 things or like well he wants to solve the crime emerson wants to get you know to get the loot and speaking yeah. of pirate ship things see how it's all connected mm -hmm. he uh he literally says like if i steal a pirate's treasure i'm not a pirate i'm just a guy looking for some treasure or whatever. Yeah. and you're like and then she like do you have a little moral debate where she gets to be like uh no that's still stealing it is not once removed this belongs to someone and you can't do that or whatever and he's like Ugh, and all that stuff and it all comes mm -hmm. back at the end, right? It all yeah. it all resolves. Where they're like wrapping them all as gifts to send back to the people. I actually really like that. She's built like a database to mm -hmm. like anonymously return everything. It's super cute, right? I think that is cool. And 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 there's the fake out where uh, where where you think you know Emerson might be doing something. The narrator's like, and he learned from their struggle, you know, from you know from their situation. Oh no, not that he's gonna stop making money off the dead. Oh no no, just that he, you know he ever wants to be stuck in a window again or whatever. It's like, mm, okay, <laughs> I'm slimming down. I thought that was weird. So he's he's stuck. 
Uh, and it doesn't look like he would actually be stuck, but he he is stuck, and like she is pulling, it's and he is and he is pulling. pulling. They're not doing the push and pull thing, so he's just getting split. And he says, "Stop pulling me!" Bah! and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. Her her calling him Pooh Bear was like one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Then later, when she's like Pooh Kick or whatever, and he goes uh, and like kicks <laughs> the thing. That's so wonderful. Um, the whole thing. You're like Pooh Bear, and he's like, "I can still reach my gun." <laughs> you want a fun wonderful. fact about the Pooh Bear universe that yes. I learned the other day. So Pooh, voiced by Shia McBride. So Pooh Bear, uh, the, the 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 series is a British thing, and and uh, oh yeah yeah the narrator in the in the, in the original Eeyore as we call him mm. uh, is 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 named after the noise that a donkey makes, but it is it is an, a silent R uh, here so, uh, there rather. So it, it's named after the noise. It's Eeyore is his name, oh. but we pronounce the R, so he's Eeyore here. Hell yeah. Learned that the other day. I was like, I was like interesting. Eeyore makes hmm. a lot of sense. Eeyore doesn't. I like Eeyore. I like Eeyore because oh. we're raised with it. Exactly. And that's his name, and it makes a name, but it's funny that it, like, they call him Eeyore. I think Eeyore would have been worse. It's like Yeehaw. I don't like it. Well, they don't have ye- There's no cowboys in, in, in England. Well, they're aware of cowboys, though. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> don't. don't we, we can't let that secret get out. You know how powerful they would be if they had cowboys? I know. What have we know. done? Destroy this footage. Yeah. No, that's a good fun fact. I was a huge Pooh Bear fan as a kid. He's pretty good. Yeah. Shaped my childhood. Yep. There's the there's the old from like the 70s or whatever where like the letters of the book the rain's coming down and like the letters of the book mm-hmm. move while it's the narrator reading it. Mm. Fun fact for the viewers at home: Lee has a large piglet tattoo on his left ass cheek. Yep. <laughs> I I don't. He does. So the fat guy's name is Shats. I made I made a, I made a note of that as a funny <laughs> thing. Shits. Whenever you have fat guys, you have to do something like that with shitting or farting or burping or something disgusting. Makes sense. It makes sense. It's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, that guy's name Shuts. Yeah, ripping off a Band-Aid was good, too. There's a lot of back and forth here. Yeah, I, just, I peel the corner slowly, the, and then I run under I warm water, warm and then water. I pour them off. It's a process. He's like, no, no process. I'll tell you right now, and all that stuff. So, like, it's only episode three. We, we you know, it, it, it had been set up that, that, that this was going to be a thing that was, like, hanging over the characters, right? Mm-hmm. He was keeping this dark secret from her, and she would be predictably like, I can never forgive you, and all that other stuff, right? But by, but, but by the end of, you know, of the episode, they're going to get the plastic wrap. She's totally down. Yeah. She's like, okay, that's fine. Everything's cool. Because honestly, it's not his fault. Yeah, a little. It's, so it's so it's such an accident and yeah. not, not a malicious thing. And could you blame him? Like, and that when he he like you know his mother dies, he brings his mother back, and that happens to kill your father. It's unfortunate, yeah. sure, but you're both fucked. No, I like the. I I, I think he didn't know how it uh, worked then, or something like no, that. No, he didn't. Even, right, so it's totally accidental. So that's how she should be, right? But in every movie and TV show and brief pamphlet I, I've ever observed, we always have the characters super like overreact and say like, "Just go. I don't even want to see you anymore. I can't believe you would do this. Why would you lie to me?" And all that stuff. The lying, honestly, so, would be the part that she yeah. would harp on. It wouldn't be the fact that that he killed him. Because she shouldn't, but but most characters yes, in, yes. in things do. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that they have, uh, that, you know, like number one that they kind of, of you know, they 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 like dabble in it, but she, you know, uh-huh. she, she, you know, she becomes reasonable about it, both by the epi- you know, the events of the episode, and just because the show doesn't have time for that, we're moving on. Episode three is mm-hmm. over. There's no more dark secrets. Everything's good. And uh, she's like, you know, she understands what's happening and kind of like, you know, accepts it. Yeah. All exposition kind he's, of things are, are done and yeah. we are ready to advance into the world mm. and see things. We also tie up the loose end of the murder we commit in the beginning to yes. usher everything into, in, in, you know, yeah, so we're, we're into literally being, clean so. of, of our bullshit and, and can adventure forth as an undead uh, investigator, <laughs> a, a, a man who can bring back the dead and a man who can knit. The pie maker, the corpse, the detective, corpse yeah. bride. Widow, no. During the whole episode, too, we also uh, have introduced Olive. Cause she's the last. She's now the love triangle, trapezoid, whatever thing uh-huh. is all, right? Because they're literally making out through plastic wrap. So she's really like, oh, no, or whatever. Yeah. I thought she, she was going to drop those coffees. Yeah. She, she meets a dude, though. Who sells a a, guy. A, absurd herbal, remedy, you know, homeopathic remedies or whatever? I, 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 I loved the whole like oxygen, you know. Olive felt like the oxygen, you know, had left the room. Yeah. Do you ever feel like the oxygen, you know, you know, just leaving the room, like, like, bam, bam, and then 
triple to, to like, you know, cap it off, where he goes, oh, God, yes, all the time. And then Avatar's like, but he didn't think of it the same way she did. His uh, fear was far more specific. And it goes into the yeah. hole. And, like, the roof is like a pie and, like, just peels off and, like... The <laughs> what does he say? He's like, the ounce has gotten lighter or something. <laughs> he's, he's afraid that the Earth's atmosphere is going to, like, come undone from the Earth and we're yeah. all going to suffocate. And he's like, no, the density is getting lower. They, they had to adjust the kilogram. Yeah, and her, and her, and 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 I believe they did, but I forget why. It, it's not because the 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 Earth is dying. But it's a great thing that a conspiracy theorist it's would suggest. It's perfect. And then like her, w without missing a beat. Well, I thought the kilogram had to be taken out of peg. <laughs> Whatever thing is like, <laughs> yeah. it's just amazing. Like that's that's ridiculous. Um, we do the whole thing with the espresso machine. He fixes mm -hmm. it right. So like uh, the narrator even calls out like she's not aware that he's a love interest, but um, you know uh, he is to her or something like that. Um, but he functions here to give uh, to give Chuck some uh, herbal remedies for depression, some mm -hmm. some basically drugs that she can spike into a pie and then arrange to have delivered to her aunts yes. to get them out of their dark place that they were in. Yes, Th this this leads to what might be next episode. I remember a thing where this is where I think Ned goes to their house and and takes a bite of his own pie. Oh no, and, and it's and all it rotten. To rot and that's mouth. how he knows where the pie came yeah. from, and he unravels the thing. Oh, it's so yeah, good. Yeah. Well, so Olive has to like deliver it, right? Because you yes. have like a funny little thing yes, about that's out of our delivery range. <laughs> Are you a delivery boy or a delivery man, boy? <laughs> Just like no or whatever. Ah. Um, so she so, so she has to deliver it by hand. Mm -hmm. Have a funny awkward thing there. She meets the ants, and she's piecing it together. But she thinks it, it's all very mundane. And Chuck faked her own death for nefarious purposes. Yes. And she doesn't know that the pie is spiked, and she's eating it too. Yes. So they're yes. all, you know, you know, eating the happy juice or whatever. And I forget what happens from, you know, from that, but I'm interested. Yeah. Do you remember anything about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> And it's got to come into play somehow, Maybe when right? I see it, I'll, I'll remember Yeah, it, yeah. It's got to come into play somehow. She's super, like, bitter and, like, upset about not being Ned's, uh, you know, yeah. person. So maybe this will help her, you know, emotionally and all that. And I assume because we have to keep getting more of this drug to put into the pies. Mm -hmm. I believe this is, like, a running thing where she keeps delivering pies multiple uh, yeah. times. Maybe, yeah, so maybe it isn't this next episode yeah. that, that the pie maker goes to that house, but at mm -hmm. some point he does. He may catch wind of these deliveries or something. She's just sneaking it in there. Yeah. Yeah, I like the whole concept of, like, of, like the, of Chuck working at the pie shop and learning the pie stuff. Cause she made that pie solo. Yes. She crafted all that her, you know. Gruyere you know, and the crust. Yeah, <laughs> with cheese, right? Is that cheese? Yeah. Uh, I've heard about cheese on pie, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I bet it would be fine. It, I bet that it would be fine, but there's literally parts uh, of the country where an apple pie is supposed to have like a slice of melted cheese on top as like a standard. Like, well, that's not a pie if you what don't put the cheese on What kind of cheese do they put on top? I forget. Maybe cheddar? Maybe like a normal cheese? I don't know. That's interesting. I remember thinking, oh, I would not like to, to order a slice of apple pie and just have that served to me without me knowing about it. And there's parts of the country where that's like a standard thing. I would try it. I would try anything because I'm a disgusting monster. Road trip. <laughs> I think you can get it. You know, you, you know, you can get it anywhere. I said road trip. Well, we can take a road trip, but you have to bring your own cheese. <laughs> Swing by the store, get some craft singles, then head to Wisconsin. Sounds good. We got it. Um, I think that's it. Else? Yeah. It ends with that button of them, uh, you know, in uh, the house eating the pie. Hmm. Doesn't it end with her? In oh, the house it might. I, I I forget what side it ends on, but Olive knows stuff. They're wrapping the gifts. They're kissing through Saran wrap again. Yeah. We're doing this whole thing. And uh, I guess we just have to wait for the next case to see what's going to happen and, like, spice things up. Yeah. But Olive is suspicious. All right, guys, so that's our thoughts on this episode. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about it. Don't die in a fire, and we will see you next time. Hello, Internet. I just love watching Just Taggers. If you've enjoyed this video as much as I have, click that subscribe button. <laughs> uh, peace out, homies.